Who's at the back? Can you can you hear me over there at the back? Okay. Um, okay, we'll make a start. There might be some late people joining us. Um, I'm John Mann. I'm from GMCVO. Here's my colleagues Heather and Theo. So they're going to chip in at some point. It's not just me doing the work. But I, we're from GMCVO, which is Greater Manchester Centre for Voluntary Organisation. And we've been using CV CRM ourselves, the organisation, since 2009. Um, and since that time, we've become not just users of the system, but implementers. So the charity that owns us um, has set up a, a separate company, which is GMCVO Databases, which now trades separately. There are four members of staff, and we do these projects, and we generate surplus, like a social enterprise, giving the money back to the charity. OK, does that make sense? OK. So this is a session on membership management. So if you thought it was something else, then we'll close our eyes, and now is a good time to leave. But also, it's important to point out that this is um, a user-aimed um, session. So it's not for developers. If you're a developer, um, you probably know all this, so you'll fall asleep. Um, and if you're an implementer, you'll probably know most of it as well. So um, can you get a show of hands? Who's, who's, who, who of you are users? Who, who of you are? OK. And how many of you are from membership organizations that have a paid, paid membership structure as well? Great. So this should be really relevant to you. You'll get something out of it, I really hope. OK. Um, <clears throat> so there's going to be three separate parts to this. I'm going to introduce the basics of CV member, and then at roughly half past, we'll talk about how you manage your memberships, and then also possible future developments, such as membership login areas, um, renewal reminders, etc. And then we'll give you a chance to ask some questions, because I noticed some of the sessions have been quite long, and you're probably just listening, and you're trying to keep your eyes open. So I'll just clap my hands if I see some before <laughs> doing this kind of thing, you know, the Egyptian head rock or whatever it is. OK, basics. I've told you who we are. Um, you've also told us who you are. If you want to just um, talk to the person next to you, introduce yourself and tell them what organization you're from and how you use memberships, we're just going to give you two minutes to do that, yeah? OK? Go. Cool. Um, so hopefully you've got to know the person next to you, what type of organization they're from, whether they have a membership structure and how that works. But I bet if you try to explain it to the other person again, it'd be quite complicated. So um, we'll go through what Civi does, and we, we support um, over 50 clients at the moment. Um, a handful of them do use the membership module, and I think some of them are here today. One of them is at least. Um, we'll talk about what Civi member is. We'll talk about the, the kind of core terminology. So it's the Civi CRM component that provides functionality to support and automate the membership of sorry, the management of memberships, so you know what Civi CRM is. Um, it's actually a core part of the software which you can enable out the box. So what does that do? It allows you to define membership types and pricing schemes that meet your needs, create self-service options for people to sign up for membership and renew, uh, manage memberships manually through the administrative interface, Create and schedule automated messages to welcome new members, and remind them about their upcoming renewals. Track and report on the contacts through the membership cycle and potentially provide additional website permissions or privileges for people who have a membership which is live. What is my membership structure? And that's a really difficult question actually because the people we've worked with, there's been a real range in terms of how it works, how long they last, uh, how much people pay. Some of them are really complicated. Um, and actually, what Civi supports out of the box isn't that complicated. So some people actually change their membership structure in order that they can track things more easily. They might cut down, for example, on different types they have. But I'll talk through it. Um, you might consider how much you charge for it. How long does your membership or your membership types, the different types of those, last? Um, and I think we've done this, yeah? So do people think that generally that their membership structure is, is simple or do they think it's difficult or somewhere in between? Somewhere in between? Simple. Good. How many different types of memberships do you have? Four membership types. And same price or different prices? Four different prices. They all last a year or? Okay. Great. Has anyone else got an example of eight? Eight membership types. Are they complicated? Not anymore. Not anymore, because, <laughs> because you switched over to Civi member. Great. Yeah. That's the right answer. OK. OK. So um, the considerations for setting up your memberships within Civi are, firstly, are they fixed 
or are they rolling? Okay. So rolling is if your membership starts on the date that you sign up and then it lasts for a period which is defined within the membership type. So this one here is a um, one year membership and it started on the 8th of October, which is, is that today? Yep. And it'll expire next year on the 7th. Okay. So whatever day you sign up on, that's a rolling membership and that's when it starts and it'll end the day before in the year after. Everyone with me? It is complicated and sometimes you just, you got to remind yourself, okay, so that, uh, that's the rolling pin. <laughs> Fixed, okay, is when membership periods begin on a set calendar date. So this is an example where it begins on the 1st of April and it finishes on the 31st of March the following year, okay? So people are aware of that kind of membership as well, yeah? That's, that's called fixed, and I've got a uh, question. Yeah? Can you address uh, the continuous uh, memberships? Because these types, you have to renew every time, or not? You mean like a lifetime? Lifetime uh, memberships. Yes, we do, yes. We've not got to this yet, actually. Okay, sorry. It's coming up, yeah. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, something like Christ the Redeemer is very fixed, that's not going to move. Um, yeah, it's for a, for a year, okay? So you can have membership terms which are set for a number of days. I don't know what kind of organization does that, but um, we don't know of any actually. Do you, does anyone have an X days? I'm guessing people are yearly memberships here, yeah, who have organizations which with, monthly. or monthly, yeah. Well, we have like a free trial, so that would only be for a set amount of time, like a month. Yeah, okay. Um, we can talk about that. Um, you can set it in the number of months, you can set the membership for a number of years, we can set it up for a number of lifetimes, but I think if you put in one lifetime or two, it's still the same. I think it'll just stay on the record. So you do still have to put in the number. Um, yeah, they, like the lifetime memberships don't need renewal because they last for as long as, as long as they live. We've not got to that stage where we've actually worked out whether it does, it stops. Um, anyway, <laughs> morbid question. Um, okay, so there's uh, something else on the configuration screen which I'm about to show you which is um, called related members. And, and this means that within your CiviCGM contact, you've got someone who has a membership, but if they have a particular type of relationship with another contact, uh, then this person will inherit the relationship. So you might have something called a um, family membership, and it might be that uh, Mr. Jones signs up for that, but that actually you've got contact details for his wife as well, for Mrs. Jones, so that if the spouse has um, the relationship, then the other person who is part, the other part of that relationship also inherits the membership. Did that make sense? Inherit? You look, you look confused. Inherit. In. Inherit. Inherit. Um, so if if there's somebody, you have got two people. Uh, let's pretend. Um, let's pretend it's brothers. Let's pretend this this is my brother. Um, <laughs> I've I've got a membership, and uh, I signed up for a family membership in Civi. He's got a record as well. Yeah, but I've got the membership. But because he's my brother. He also has the membership because we define the type of relationship that um, will have the related membership. So that means that you, you, bought, the, you bought the membership. That's it. That yes. Yeah, I, I'm the one who's bought it. Yeah, essentially, I'm the person who signed up. Quite often online, you might have the option to add the other people, the related contacts. So it might be children, it might be spouse. And um, this only works for families, for households, and for organizations, isn't it? Employees. You can't set up a relationship type that this works for. You can't set up a new relationship type. It only works for I thought you could set it up, yeah. yeah. You, could, you could set it up. On which version have you tried it, actually? 4.6. Four, six. Four, six. I'm pretty sure we've done it because we set up some relationship types. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we've done it, yeah. We can check. So if the organisation was a member, then all its employees would be members. That's the way our membership is Yeah. <laughs> So the relationship that we're using there to, to give the related membership is employee, employer, yeah? Okay, so that's how you can set up. Um, yeah, so this automatically grants memberships to others, um, e.g. a spouse or a partner. And you can also set up a maximum number of related members. So you, a spouse is a bad example, but say if, um, um, Say if we're no, an employee, say if an organization, you don't want 10 people all to benefit, you know, you might just say, okay, let's just give the membership to the first three, okay? In some, some countries you could get away with that, but not Britain. So we just define it. Or we can 
actually defined and limited, okay? So you've got those options within Civi to configure that. Okay, this is the screen um, to set up a membership type. Okay, so I don't know, can you see that at the back? I've tried to make it big, but fit everything in. So um, this is the membership type at the top. I've called it gold member. Um, you can describe it. And actually in here, when you set it up in the admin, you configure which member, which organization they're the member for. So in most cases, actually, the person who has the install of Civi, which might be your organization, that might be you. But it does support membership for multiple organizations because it's quite clever. That's quite useful. But most of the time, probably 99% of the time, this organization will be the membership organization. It might be, it'll probably be you. Okay. Um, there's a minimum fee you set here, which is the price of the membership. The financial type um, we set here is member dues. Um, there are other financial types in the system, such as donation, event fees, but member dues sounds like it's appropriate. And then I talked about the, uh, the duration. So I put in here one lifetime, but this drop down, I'm not going to do it live because it takes forever to demo something live is you can actually say, put that unit in days, in months, in years, or in lifetimes, which I don't understand why you could have more than one. Um, but anyway, so that's how you configure it. And then we talked about rolling and fixed before. This is where you configure that. You say this is a rolling membership type. Um, if it's for a fixed period, then two extra boxes would show up just underneath, and it would give you the dates for when the the day of the month and the month when the membership starts, okay? Otherwise, this is fine because it just calculates today's date plus, well, one. Say if it was a month or a year, it could work out when that's going to expire. Is everyone with me on that? Great. Membership dues uh, is a default from the out of the box, isn't it? It is. You can set it for absolutely any financial type you want. You can. Yeah. You can. But um, that's just how you classify your um, contributions, actually. Yeah. So if you've been using contributions, you'll know that you might be receiving money for event fees or for donations. But member dues, in most cases, works. Okay. Um, and then, as I talked about, the inherited relationship. So memberships can be automatically granted to related contacts by selecting a relationship type. This is where you set this as well. So you can actually, in this drop-down list, this should show every relationship type like you were saying, Andy, it should show all of those in that list, and you could actually select multiple ones. Okay. Um, this is whether this is this option is visible for somebody in in the public when they're signing up for their membership. Um, there's an order and there's an enable button. Okay. So I've got an example now of a page which shows you all the membership types that have been set up. So I've got, for example, a student membership, student family, a non-student non -student family. Um, yeah, this is just the summary screen. This, this is actually, all, all these are fixed, um, and it gives you the fixed start date. Um, you notice that just for my family memberships, um, for these ones, these four actually, it's got the related relationship type that you're using, okay? And it's also got a maximum type, so for, part, for the partner relationship, it's only allowing your the first, your first partner to have a relationship if you do have more than one. Okay. Okay. With Civi Member, you get a dashboard. Can I just actually have a show of hands of who's actually using Civi Member, just so I can get? Okay. So, so a lot of you are familiar with this already, yeah. Great. So I'm recapping. Um, for each of the membership types that I showed you on the previous screen, um, it has a row, uh, the name of the membership and how many members you've got who have signed up new. Um, it shows you by default in this dashboard the previous two months. So it's showing, it's showing new members signed up in September and October, and then it's showing everybody who signed up in 2015, um, both the splitting up into both new people and people who have renewed, and your total. Um, the only thing to note on this screen is that it says primary member counts. So those who own the membership, so when I was talking about the, the related membership, rather than receiving it via relationship, are in brackets. So this number in brackets here is going to be less than this number here. Okay? So there's 1,165 members, of which in total there are 1,192 related members. And 
primary members, yep. I don't know whether you're going to get onto uh, reporting, but my frustration is that I need to be able to very quickly see more than just the last two um, months. Is there a way of doing that? Um, I don't think you can configure this dashboard. Does anyone, has anyone tried that? No, but you can, you can um, export the memberships. That's what I would do off the top of my head. Yeah, because you, the memberships will have dates. I'm sure if, because I'm going to the sprint after this, I'm sure I could raise that with, you know, the, the people involved and see if there's demand for that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I think there are some default reports in CDCNN where you could select the sign-up date in something like uh, last month or last three months or you could pre-select the dates later. So maybe that, that could help. Is that the um, using the find or using the re a report? Uh, uh, yeah, the default reporting in CD. Oh, the default reporting, OK. I'm, I'm guessing that this is a live kind of thing, and it's not because I'm looking at the ones on mine, and I don't believe the numbers. Because I think the numbers are wrong. So who can I ask how those numbers are actually built? Because I, so of course, these are not my numbers. But uh, I, uh, if I look at my memory, uh, my membership summary, and I've just implemented just a couple of weeks ago. So yeah. This is brand new. Oh, okay, uh, right. But have they imported some data into it? Yeah, that, that was last month. So this, so this month is new. But I do see the, re the renewal numbers not being... They're not reflected in the, in the reports? No, no. What version are you using? Uh, 4.6. Okay. It depends. You probably... Cron job. Which cron job? There is a membership uh, cron job, is yeah. Is anyone who... Yes, run, run, run the membership cron job. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Talk, talk to who set it up initially as well. You're, you did. Oh, okay. <laughs> Talk to yourself <laughs> when you go back. <laughs> 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 what, what am I doing wrong? But, okay, membership crunch. We, we, we have a similar issue. You're saying that the numbers aren't getting there right. Right. Yeah. So I, mean, I know we've got a couple of contribution pages where people go in and join up, and the, the numbers on the contribution pages are different to what you're telling us on there. Luckily, I'm not the only one. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, I don't know. So, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's, we can have a look at that offline or after yeah, the yeah, session yeah. if you want. Yeah, if you're still stuck with this uh, question, you can always ask the, this question on Stack Exchange. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, okay, so um, each membership that is stored against your contact record will also have a status, and I'm just going to explain to you the different statuses and what that actually means. So um, you've got one which is a new, and it says here that... Um, they're new, you can configure this actually for how long they're new for. Um, usually it's 30 days. There's a current membership. After that period, they become a current member. There's a grace type, which means um, they've expired, and you can give them a number of days to renew. So that is still what's classified as a current status. Those top three there are classified as current status. Um, after that grace period, then they become an expired member. Um, and they can cancel the membership, actually. Um, and there's a couple of others there. There's this, um, this graph, this um, JPEG, which you can have a look at in the CV CRM book to, to explain that in more detail. So for example here, that's their current membership, this long line, and then they've configured it for two months, a grace period, so they're still a current membership. And, they've end, and down here, their membership has ex expired. Uh, and that continues, continues to be expired. Okay, so um, how does this actually work in terms of people signing up for membership? You need a contribution page if you want people to be able to self-serve. So a lot of this stuff actually works out of the box, but you can manage that offline. I think somebody I was talking to earlier said they did that, but they didn't have the front end for it. So you need a contribution page. Uh, you need to link that contribution page to the, the membership or the type of memberships that we've created. And you can link CV profiles to this. Are people familiar with profiles? 
Okay, so yeah. pro profiles are basically um, ways to collect additional data in CIVI. Um, if you want to collect additional data at the point when they become a member, then you'd create the profile. Okay, so this is an example of a, a membership sign-up form. It's really basic for the purposes of um, today's session. Um, at the top, the user will be able to select the membership they're signing up for. Uh, they need to put in their email address. Um, in our case, this is a contribution page which is linked to a profile creating a Drupal um, account as well, because this is what um, one of the projects we worked on um, they required. So they put in their username and password, which actually just populates from their email address. Uh, so I was talking about profiles earlier. This is the profile which is linked to the contribution page. So in addition to the stuff on the previous page, which was saying, what membership do you want? Uh, what's your email address? What's your desired username and password? We're, we're then asking them what their nationality is, their date of birth, their gender, anything which is going to be relevant to your organization, to the content records that you need for membership. Okay. Profiles to work from the back end. So you configure the profiles. Can, can you can you get the profile to work from the back end if you're inputting membership information? Yeah, actually, on the contribution pages, um, typically if you're logged in to Civi already, you can access a contribution page. Yeah. But there's also a, a module or extension that we use, which is called No Overwrite. Which I, th I think does it work without that extension though? Yeah, not, not you. I'm not you. Yeah. yeah. So when you go to the contribution page and you're already logged in to Civi, it will say, you know, this is Han Solo. If this is not you, then press this button. It'll clear the data and you're not, you're not adding that yourself. So yes, yeah. is, if that's what, what you mean, yeah. You just want to add this data, yeah. but for somebody else. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. And tomorrow morning there's a session about profiles. Uh, tomorrow. tomorrow, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, we've integrated it. Because it's a contribution page, of course, we're taking payment, and we've integrated it in this case with WorldPay. You can integrate it with other um, payment processes that your site is using. Um, it depends on what your processes are at the moment, but that's a great way for it to work. Um, you get the payment straight away, and you can get usually the, the response from the payment processes to tell them they've received the money, and therefore the membership can go live. Okay, I'm just going to hand over. Okie okay, doke. So like John Mann said, I'm Heather, and I work with him at GMCVO Databases. Um, so I'm going to take us through the next few steps in membership management. Um, we'll look at um, a little bit more about that membership um, sign-up page and using scheduled reminders to manage renewals. Um, so like we said, you, you build your membership uh, registration page through a contribution page. Uh, what I didn't want to do is a session on contribution pages, because that's probably a 45 minute session on its own. Um, but to just point you to the membership tab on the very top. So um, you'll go through kind of your basic steps. So the title of the page, what do I want it to say at the top? Um, what profiles are people going to complete? So I'm going to build my profiles and then come here and say, this is the form I want them to complete. But I obviously need to come to my membership tab and enable my membership section. And when I do that, um, some options are going to become available to me below. And I'll want to um, configure the um, messages, so the title of the page and the introductory message for new members. Um, and if you want to be really clever, you can do it for renewals as well. So that means you can have one page that people can come back to again and again, and depending on if it's a new member or a renewal, they're going to see a different message. So it just personalizes it quite nicely for people. If you have um, a membership area on your website and people are logging in, if they log in and come to that page, um, it will obviously give them the renewal message, but it will also tell them their current membership ex expiration date. So it even gives them a bit more personalized information if you're doing that. Uh, 
Um, so like I said a moment ago, just work through the, um, the tabs along the top. The ones that I've got highlighted are kind of the basics that you need to, to get your, for, um, your contribution page up and running. You might want to be a bit more fancy with some telefriend things, but you don't have to do that. Um, and if it's your first contribution page and membership, um, online membership setup, you might want to just stick with the basics and feel really confident in that working well and then maybe experiment with taking things a bit further. Okay, so on that membership tab, um, we need to enable the membership to expose those options, provide our new and renewal messages um, for each, and um, select which membership types that users will be able to select from that page. So like that screen that John Men showed, um, we had lots of different membership types that we could enable in the system, but I may not want all of those to be available on my online registration page. I might want to limit to what people can um, register for. And at the bottom of the page, um, just trying to think if that's my next slide. Oh, I don't think I've got a screenshot of it, crumbs, <laughs> sorry. Um, we don't want to rely on Wi-Fi too much because uh, I had a really bad experience once, so I try to do it all in slides now. Um, but at the very bottom, it, it should be really easy for you to, to play about with. It's literally just some check boxes. These are the um, membership types that I want to enable on this page. Um, so here's just a quick shot of the profiles tab, like I said. Um, so we can configure up to two profiles that we can include on the page. Um, and depending on your membership type, um, you might want to use the gift aid extension as well. If your specific membership type is gift aidable, um, you can ask those questions straight on there as well and collect that data as well. Um, so membership fees, you might have free membership, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but if you remember again, when John Mann set up the membership, he set a default minimum fee that someone has to pay, and I think his was 50 pounds in that case. So you could have a, um, a more complex pricing structure that um, you'll enable people to pay more than that, but that is the minimum that somebody can become a member for. Um, so if you just stick with that default membership um, fee and enable your fee options on the page, they'll just appear there straight away. Um, but you can use price sets to configure really complex membership pricing if you want to do that as well. Um, so that might be that you've got a public price and then you've got a hidden price at the back end that a member of staff could give someone. So their kind of favorite service users rang up and they go, oh, I'm going to give you a bit of a deal. They could do that. Or some people have cascading prices for one type. So we have um, student memberships, but depending on the type of student that you are, um, the, maybe we prefer different programs, so we're going to give them a bit of a discount as well. You can have some different options, and that can all be done through price sets. And you can also use the Stivi discount extension alongside of this as well. So you can have that discount code appearing at the top of your page, allowing people to put in a promo code to get a discount on their membership. Um, and you can set up um, Civi discounts to be, I think Theo might be talking about this, so I'll try not to steal this thunder too much. Um, but you can set up automated discounts as well for members. So again, if you've got a, a membership area of your website, people could log in and automatically have membership discounts applied on their renewal pages. Um, but not all memberships are paid for. Some of them are free. Does anybody have free memberships? Yeah? They still exist, yeah. <laughs> you still get something for free. Okay, um, so it might seem counterintuitive, but you still set up a contribution page, even though there's actually gonna be no payment happening. So sometimes when people are setting up a free membership, they think, well, contribution pages are for money, I, I don't wanna go there, but actually you do. That's where you, that's where you wanna go. Um, so when you set up your membership, you'd say the default uh, minimum fee is zero pounds in our case. Um, and then if you uncheck display membership P, um, it, it will say not not if you don't do that. So uncheck that option to display membership fees and then you'll just have your types there. So people can just come down and, and choose their types um, and the fees won't, won't appear. So there'll be no kind of um, moving on to payment processes or anything. They'll go straight to confirm and complete. Um, do people use scheduled reminders for their membership renewals? Yeah. I do have a question about that. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. Hopefully I'll answer it, but if not, please ask it. Um, so 
the scheduled reminders are um, a really great way to automate your renewal process. So to save that chasing of um, encouraging people to renew automatically. Um, so it's basically an automated email that's going to trigger based on um, their membership end date. Um, is usually the one we're, we're going to use for renewals. We're probably not going to use the start date. Although you can set up reminders um, based on start date, so you may want to send out um, an automated reminder so many days after someone's start date, welcoming them as a member. Um, but this is specifically around expirations. So um, the reminders are what we'd say relative based on the end date. So we would say it's 14 days before, 30 days before, um, 15 days after the end date, anything like that. And that's where they're configured. So if you follow the, the path, administer communication scheduled reminders, you'll see your scheduled reminders in there. So when you go to set one up, this is what it's going to look like. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so we give it a title. We'd say, what type of um, membership is this for? It could be both, or it may just be one. Um, and here's those kind of relative dates I was referring to. So in this case, I've said two weeks before the end date. Um, and like we saw earlier, I can drop down my weeks. That can be days, months, years. And I can have membership end date or start date. And I can have before and after. So you can obviously imagine all the combinations you could come up with then to really pinpoint when you want people to receive the reminders based on um, how you work. Um, it's nice to always record an activity alongside this so you can see in someone's activity record when they got the reminders and when they renewed. Um, it might just help you get an idea of when people actually do renew. Are they quite good and renew straight away or do you have to send them three, four reminders first before they do that? Um, and then just down below I just write my, write my message to send them. So if you're sending multiple reminders, if um, someone renews on the first reminder, say at four weeks, and then you have another schedule that's two weeks before the end date, someone that's already <coughs> renewed is not going to No, they won't get it because their end date has now moved yeah. to a year from now, so it's moved into the future. Yeah. So that's why it's really good to use that the end date as the point um, or the, um, the date in which to determine whether or not to send the reminder or not. Yeah, because as soon as they renew, that just moves, moves forward. Um, my question is on the recipients. Because our members are organizations, so they don't have an email address or it might be a generic one, right. I have a membership contact for every organization. So I've set them up as permissioned relationships but I don't know how to, how do you use those permissioned relationships to do things like this? I mm. can't run a report with them, I can't seem to do anything with them. Is it a specific relationship type? So are they like, say, the membership contact for that organization, or is it just a generic it, it's relationship? It's a specific contact, but they could be any role within the organization. It varies right. hugely. Because if you have a, a, say, a determined relationship type, so like, Heather Oliver is the membership contact for GMCVO. You could build a smart group on that, um, that permission. Um, also, and then in your advanced search screen, you could say also they have to be a current member and those types of whatever your criteria kind of is. So it'd be a smart group. Yeah, and then you can limit your recipients to a group, I think, she says. Um, so yeah, you could do it. You could do it that way. Yeah. No. I don't think there is because it's using loads of code to pick up different bits of data from people's records. Um, it, it is really, it is really, really hard to do. Yeah. So is it that you want to, do you want to completely rewrite it or do you just want to tweak it a little bit? Ideally, it'd be, it'd, it'd be nice if you could edit all those emails in the same way you do with City Mail, where you go in with your ink and, 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 and change it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm you sure. Pick the out um, the minor ones, you want to make them go and say this is what we're doing, this is what we're going to do. Right, right, I see what you mean. If you could disable that, those, those ones that come out of the system, you know, 
to potentially give yourself a scheduled reminder, which is sent out after the joins, and then you've got complete control over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you could do like, yeah, one, one hour after their membership start date or something like that. Yeah, you could do it, you could do it that way. Sorry, I didn't hear the question. Do you switch off the receipt that comes out of the contribution page? Um, I think so, yeah, yeah, because there's a receipt tab. I think you can just turn that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think something's changed on that recently because when I update members now manually, it comes up automatically and says, thanks very much, a receipt has been sent to. And I haven't said anywhere send a receipt, and it's sending things. Is it changed I've by default? Well, I've tried to find where oh, the right. default is, oh, and right. I can't turn it off. So it's sending out things that I'm not that you've wanting it not to send, to send. I can't find anywhere to turn it off. Oh, right. And that seems to have started happening quite recently. Have you had an upgrade to a different version? Um, only a minor upgrade. Right. Okay. That might be, yeah, maybe check with whoever helps you with that kind of stuff. And they can get into the back and have a dig. <laughs> Okie doke. Are we okay to move on? Yeah. Um, and you might also want to consider how you can, you can personalize your reminders. Um, do people here use tokens a lot? Yeah, they're happy with that. Um, so yeah, using things like your email greeting and your membership end date, just it makes it feel a bit friendlier. Um, and in my reminder, I can also use a checksum link. Um, so again, like we said, it will um, then present the right message. So if it's that renewal message I want to see by sending out the checksum link, um, it basically puts a little key into the URL. So it makes that connection between that person's email and their record on Civi. So it will pre-populate the form for them so they don't even have to type in their name. They can just go, great, that's me. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Submit, pay, um, and done. Um, so I've put a link here. I think the slides will be sent out afterwards to the, the wiki where they detail out how to build your checksum links. So you can build them for profiles, contribution pages, and event pages. So make sure you look for the contribution page link. Um, and they're divided by your CMS, so whether you're Drupal, WordPress, or Joomla. So just have a look there. It'll tell you the process for each one. Um, if you can't be bothered to remember that link or write it down, just Google Civi CRM Checksum. It's the first thing that comes up. I always think, oh, I should bookmark it, and then I never do. I just Google that if I need to find it. Um, and to just give Pop as a plug, he's actually doing a session on using tokens and personalizing mailings right after this. So if you think, oh, that sounds really interesting and I've not really done that yet, um, go and see Papas and he's going to talk through personalizing mailings. Um, so that'll be, I think, using the mailings module, but any of that um, kind of concept he talks about there, you'll be able to use in um, that scheduled reminder screen we were just looking at as well. Does anyone have any more questions before I hand over to Theo on that, on that little bit? No? We're okay. Right? Theo. <laughs> Now I get to have a break. <coughs> there you are. Sorry. Just got this one. <coughs> Okay, I'm going to show you some organizations that we've been working with and some of the ways that they've been using their memberships um, system to give like membership areas. So for PCRS, on their main website, as a member signs in, these blocks change. So some are only available to members. So it's kind of, you can have a flexibility with your content. So I'll just show. So this is their membership page, little block there to sign up. So once they have signed in, that block disappears, they go on to different content. There's the membership dashboard, which is quite useful to see dates. It gives you a bit more information there of events you've signed up to. And this is another little block that their little dashboard links. <clears throat> Another feature that PCRS has is a directory because um, it's medical professionals kind of have a directory there of contact details of different professionals all over the UK, which is searchable. 
just only for members. So that's kind of a benefit of having membership. You get access to membership details of other professionals that you may want to have business contact with. And we're going to another one. This is endometriosis. <clears throat> so they've got a nice sign up page there. Um, asking you to join, giving you nice details about the benefits of membership, membership sign up page. And then we're going to go on to International Society. This one is a little different. It's an organisation for students. They do day trips, classes, um, over overnight trips as well. So it's kind of a bit different. So their membership, different price structures there. Um, their dashboard, <coughs> linked in with the Sifi membership. So as they click on those icons there, they get taken to a dashboard page, which gives them information about the trips, the classes they've signed up to, and also produces a ticket, which they can use when they go to the classes or on the trips. And that's a little bit of a membership card there as well. I think that was it for my bit. Yeah. I'll just point out, um, if, you are, if you are considering um, having a membership area on your website, then um, there are a couple of Drupal modules, for example, that you could enable. Uh, one of them is uh, Member Sync, Member Role Sync, so that y if you're familiar with um, Drupal roles, um, that's what checks what you can see when you're on the website. Okay, so you might have a membership role and that will synchronise with the specific membership types that you've got set up. Okay. Um, this wasn't me. Okay, do people use Civi Discount? No? Yes? So, so you can use um, Civi Discount to provide discounts to membership. So on the contribution page that we've seen before, you'd be able to put in a code which you create in the back end to give a discount which is either a fixed amount off the membership or a percentage, okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. But also it's possible, yeah, that's, that's the manual discount which I just talked about. Uh, and then there's an automatic dis discount which is applied to logged in users. So if you log in to, um, to your website, that you've got a valid membership, then you can set it up so that the Civi discount will apply a discount automatically to, say, an event that you're signing up to. You specify the event types and you also specify the amount or level of the discount. Okay? Yeah, um, that's it. That's all we've got to present actually today. But does anyone have any questions? Um, okay. Yes. Yeah. As long as they've got, um, so in, in Civi, um, I'll, I'll give this a go because I'm sure it's, it's not going to work. <laughs> but there's a, <laughs> everyone else, for everyone else today, it seems to have gone wrong. So um, I'm doing, playing a, playing a game here. Um, I'll go for the demo site. I'm sure it'll be accessible in here. On your contact record, um, there's, a, there's a number which is your CV CRM ID and next to that it's got your CMS ID number as well. So as long as they have access to, to log in they can do that. Alternatively if you don't want them to log into your website to update details um, then you can go the checksum route which is to send them a link which is unique which will when they click on that allow them to only update information that you're, you've created in the profile. So let's have a look. Uh, oh, there's a test test. Yeah, it's working pretty well for me, isn't it? It's just everybody else. Yeah, yeah, you see here, that's your CIVI CRM ID there, 202. And next to that, this record also has a, in this case, this is a Drupal account. So I can open that here. OK. So this person can log into their system and you can give them links to navigate to update their own profile page, which might be their address or the date of birth, whatever it is you're looking to collect. Um, something to point out here then about the, um, 
member roll sync is that I've got um, here the rolls. Oh, right, okay. This is the demo site. I'm not an admin. But on this page, ordinarily, it will tell you what role they have within your website. Two quick questions. Um, is, I think what we've, what we've got Uber Car, we've got City Event, we've got City Member. Um, what would be great is there's able to integrate the form so you can go in and join, buy something from the shop and sign up to an event all in one form, so it's just one page. Is there any, is there any extension? Not that I'm aware of. I don't think that there's um, kind of sh shopping cart feature. And I know that there was something which was called uh, CV event cart, which has been discontinued. Some Americans pulled the plug. So I don't, I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't know. Yeah, so are they buying things from a store? Is that what we're using Uber cart for? But you're saying on one page. So do you want, you're saying in one page, you want them to be able to... Um, there was a Civi app a while ago, but not, not doing what you're, you're describing. But a lot of the sites that we designed, to be honest, we designed them with tough responsive themes so that they are mobile friendly. So it doesn't matter, you'd have to download and install an app to your mobile or to your tablet, but they can actually access it via the web through whatever browser they're using on there, which might be, you know, Chrome or Firefox, Safari. Because in some ways, if you've got an app, then you're restricting who can actually purchase. That's, that's what kind of my take on it. I don't know if anyone else got. <laughs> Sorry, we, I missed you out. Um, yeah, does it work also with uh, the work you, you've done with direct debits? Um, you, were, you were showing that you worked with WorldPlay. Uh, yeah, direct debit is a different extension, but because it's linked to the contribution page, uh, there shouldn't be any reason why it wouldn't work. Um, so your question is, can you use membership with uh, with the uh, direct debit extension, uh, yes, you should be able to. I'm looking at implementing the Civi member or um, organization, British Gaming Association, um, but it, it, it consists of a sort of an overarching organization and, and a whole bunch of sort of 30 or 40 separate clubs which are responsible for their own administration. Oh. Does Civi member support that at the moment, whereby a club can manage a group of people? And yeah, um, I don't know if you were here at the beginning when I was yeah. set, setting up the membership type. Um, I think I demonstrated kind of that you could, um, all the way back, that you could set up um, an organization, you could determine the organization that the membership belongs to. It sounds, that sounds right. The, the problem I think is that there would be, everybody would be a member of the main organization. Yeah. But every, every sub organization would have its own, does have its own <coughs> sets of memberships. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So actually, you, the, the problem then is that when you um, create these membership types, you're saying that you're having to create one for every single sub organization. Oh, okay. Yeah, you do. You do this. You, you do this thing, but um, also, it sounds too complicated. <laughs> so maybe you need to rethink it. We've, you know, it's, it's quite it's quite limited. If you want to, you know, change it. Because there are lots of, we, we've discovered whilst implementing Civi Member that people work in lots of different ways. We've come yeah, across we people that. We change our own membership, but we can't change the other organisation's memberships. Yeah. Because they're effectively separate but kind of affiliated to us. But, um, so mm. we, what we would like to do is to provide them with a system of managing their members because they, you know, their members are also our members, so we'll be addressing them. Yeah, so, so the key thing was, you know, when I was talking about this before, you know, j these considerations. Can you fit your membership structure into the way that it, it works in the civvy, you know? It's ours, we can, but I'm not sure. You think you can? Well, that's good. You'll be able to do it. <laughs> uh, you know, and a lot of people try and explain their membership structure to us, and they say, actually, we can't describe it. It's really difficult. And so you're asking us to interpret something which you don't understand into uh, membership structure. Um, that's difficult. Yeah. Hello. 
three types of members, uh, but can we uh, also limit that a person can only be uh, an active member for one type, uh, type of uh, mm, one type of membership? Yeah. So if I don't know. They are a member for one type, they, I don't can't, know. They, they can't. They can't sign up for another one. Yes. We've, we've had that problem. I don't. For self-service, you can only have four membership type, and we've seen going through tickets for this and it's because Sydney is based around um, upselling, so you know you start on a lower membership, and, or you know go vice versa, you go down. Yeah. We we can override it in the administration, so on the back end we can give people additional membership types, and it sometimes screws up their renewals. Yeah, that's basically what I'm yeah. very much afraid of. Uh, you know, that's, uh, but, okay, it's not really a very comforting answer, but we need to dive into that, I guess. Uh, what about if you have appeared for your membership, which is in a quarter, for example, <laughs> the 1st of January till the last day of March, and then the 1st of April till the last day of, of June, and then the 1st of July till the last day of October? Oh. So it's a fixed period, yeah. say like a quarter. And I know it's really hard because um, when I worked at the Socialist Party, yeah. this was one of the key issues. Um, but I was just wondering if you knew an answer. But if you don't know an answer... I don't, I don't think you can do it yeah. because you can only specify um, fixed or rolling. But if it's fixed, it starts finishes on um, certain dates. Yeah. If you if you go into actually here, yeah. let's go to the live site again. Yeah, yeah we, we tried saying okay, uh, do a fixed period and then three months, but then you had to set up a start date, which is the first of January. But yeah. You select the first of October. Yeah. For the annual ones, you can select the um, you can select those dates. For those monthly ones, I'm not sure you can. Um, So you're saying it only lasts three months, but it's fixed. Yeah, and then it renewals at the next three months. So here we go. Let's go for. I don't think so. No, yeah. look. If you, it's only if you select year. Yeah. That. Oh, hold on. It's the. It's the. Uh, fix, where's the type? Uh, it's fixed. Yeah. Oh, so actually, if we go to month. Yeah. You see, it disappears. Okay, so in a year here, if we give someone a fixed one-year membership, um, it starts on a certain day and will end, therefore, on the day before, yeah. But if you go to month, that disappears. So the answer is with Civi as it is, no. Yes. Okay. What's the question, sorry? Sorry, uh, the membership. Yeah, it can. Yeah, you can do that, but it's um, it's from. Uh, mm. I'm, I'm, I think we're going to have to finish yeah. just because of um, the, ne the next <laughs> sessions, and we could be here a long time. We could have a day on <laughs> membership. <laughs> so next next year, we'll, next year we'll have one day for for memberships in CVCM. Yeah. Um, um, oh, great! Great. Thanks very much. Yeah.